Nine dead. Here we go. And we're live. So hello, Mr. Yura. My name is Jordan Cameron. Um, I'm the editor-in-chief of BlackManAndRobin.com. And I've heard about your new project, um, Project Phoenix. Um, can you tell me a bit about that? Okay, um, we're basically an indie game um, team, um, which is originating from Japan. And um, I've got a lot of uh, developers from the West and the East uh, working on this. Um, and these developers are uh, people I, I've met through my work um, in the United States and in Japan. And um, I thought I'll bring everybody together to make something fun. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, now, I checked out the press release for your game. The story looks pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, might I ask, what games does it take inspiration from? Well, um, I'm a I'm an avid gamer myself. Um, I love uh, World of Warcraft to, you know, the old Warcraft 3 stuff to, you know, um, Final Fantasy Secret of Mana, um, Final Fantasy Tactics Ogre. Um, and, you know, we take a lot of inspiration from these, you know, um, uh, these games, but really uh, what we're trying to do is, although we're making, you know, getting bits and pieces of nice things from other games that we really liked, but, you know, Project Phoenix is a lot of our own stuff, you know, so I can't really go into details about um, what what they are just yet because um, uh, our final plan isn't really finalized, but um, we do have a very uh, clear plan on uh, making something very unique. I see. Okay, that sounds very good. Now, for the sake of the folks at home, can you give us a quick um, a quick run through of what the story is? Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure how much we've published on the press release, so I'm only allowed to talk um, to a certain extent. But I think um, I'm allowed to say that uh, the main character is a guy called Marcus Stern, um, who is a who is a Templar, and um, he basically runs across a uh, amnesic angel um, called Ruffles. And uh, basically, the story starts from there to, find, to finding out why she's there, how she got there, why she's in, why she is uh, in music, and um, what they, do they need to do in order, order to restore her memory. And along the way, um, because um, because when the angel came uh, down to the planet of uh, well, the land of Ashgard, um, basically, uh, you know, it was. Um, People saw the uh, saw the angel come down, and people from different races would send their scouts to find out what what all this commotion is about. And uh, gradually, Marcus started finding other people to travel with, and basically find out the mysteries of her background. I see. Well, that sounds very interesting. Um, now, I'm hearing that this is a JRPG. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that the market has changed very much um, for the production of RPGs, especially JRPGs? Yes, I believe so. Um, well, what kind of things would you like me to talk about? Because there's a lot of things I can talk about. Okay, well, um, like in, in specific, um, the audience. Like, do you think people are still buying JRPGs like they used to back in the day? I think there's more people buying JRPGs than ever. Because... Um, because of how the you know internet marketing is and how more and more people have access to game than 10 years ago, let's say. Uh, but that being said, um, I'm seeing a very big lack of enthusiasm, especially um, especially in, you know, I can't be very specific as you may understand, but um, in, especially in the better known, you know, um, JRPG titles. So um, oh, yes. I think... Um, there's a, there's several reasons for it, and I could go forever talking about why this became to be. But um, I think it's just the way how the Japanese culture and the Japanese companies work in order to make these JRPGs. And um, I think that's that's a that's the biggest problem that we're facing right now. And uh, we don't want to be extinct. Um, we we love JRPGs, and we think we can get the JRPG genre back up to scratch. And um, continue where you know um, they left off when they were really good. So um, yeah, uh, I guess this is a part of the reason why we're doing Project Phoenix. I see. Okay, that is because th the question I was just about to ask mm -hmm. you is why should we be excited for Project Phoenix? And I think you pretty much just said it. There, you're going to bring JRPGs back to their glory days. You know, like um, exactly. Like I guess. I it's hard to believe, but I think it was just last year that I finally beat Chrono Trigger, 
And that game did several things right that lots of RPGs and, I mean, games in general today are doing wrong, mm-hmm. like with regard to storytelling and such. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really looking forward to that in Project Phoenix. Thank you. Now, my, now, just more of a personal question for you. How did you get into game development? Well, um, I'm a music person to start off with, and um, my, uh, sorry, um, I used to, uh, well, I am still running this orchestra called the Eminent Symphony Orchestra, uh, which is a symphony orchestra which resides in Sydney in Australia. And uh, we specialize in performing and recording for video games such as uh, we've done, you know, uh, Chronicles of Bacteria. Uh, oh, sorry. Is that the uh, English title? I think so. Uh, Let's see. Um, you guys did... Um you could, did you do the music for Halo? Uh, no, we didn't do the Halo music, but we did do Diablo 3. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, we did Soul Calibur 5. Um, tons of, you know, tons of stuff, really, um, with video uh, video games and anime. Um, a lot of JRPGs, uh, including things like uh, uh, White Knight's Chronicles. Um, we also did a very, um, very interesting one called... Uh, it's not a JRPG, though. It's called El Shaddai. Um, oh, a sense of Metatron. I've heard yes. of that one. Um, our choir was uh, in charge of doing the choir, uh, our chorus works, and I was in charge of writing and uh, coordinate writing um, the language for El Shaddai, and also uh, in charge of um, the coordinating the whole uh, the whole choir and everything. So um, that's where that's my background. And um, during these times, I've um, you know I've worked with lots of people like uh, Hitoshi Sakimoto, Yasunori Mitsuda, you know Nobuo Matsu. Um, and then I went when I, you know, I went to the states and worked with Blizzard. Um, I also met a lot of people um, in the American um, development community, um, whom we um, I became very good friends with. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess this is all where it started from. And I, you know, I was I was just so overwhelmed that I got to I got to experience and be part of something which is so I don't know, um, which has been my you know my passion. Um, when I was a kid, like, you know, um, I used to play Diablo 1 and 2 and I never thought I'd be working on Diablo 3. It's, it's just <laughs> amazing how everything just turned out to be and all these titles that I, I wish, I wished, you know, I, I didn't think I'd be even be working in this genre of, uh, you know, genre of, uh, uh, works, but, um, it all happened. And, um, but, uh, I can't really explain to you how I transisted from, you know, uh, the musician me to the director me, but um, I just don't like when things aren't done right. I just um, I I guess I have a bit of an OCD problem, where I want to, you know, do something which nobody has done, not for the sake of doing it for the glory or the fame or anything, because just for the fact that you know, um, if nobody's gonna make it, who's gonna make it, right? Exactly, yeah. and I mean, now. Um just quickly, might I ask, what instruments do you play first? Um, I'm a violinist. Oh, excellent. I used to play the violin. Great. I, I wasn't very... Well, when I was like five years old, I tried it out. Uh-huh. Um, I wasn't really that great at it, but today I'm a pianist, great. and I really love playing things by ear. Awesome. But um, that being said, now, you said that your role is the director of the project. Mm-hmm. Now, I might ask, um, what exactly does the director do on a game? Because everybody knows what a film director does. What about a game director? Right. I'm not too sure myself, but um, everybody tells me I'm a director, so I just went along with it. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, look, I, I actually have, uh, I fulfill multiple roles, um, and um, a director should really uh, be the person who wants to fulfill a particular passion or a dream or a concept, basically, and uh, make sure the team is... Um, you know, um, is given inspiration and direction, basically. That's hence the word director. Um, so when some people give, or well, people give me art or people ask me for, um, you know, my suggestions in terms of the gameplay, because I concepted, I'm also the concept guy for the whole game. Um, you know, um, I, I'll give them my feedback, but I really want a lot of their own stuff because they're all veterans. You know, they're all very good at what they've done. And obviously they're experts at the field. I don't really want to, um, uh, tread on their shoes, so to speak, because um, I want them to flourish with their with their talent, talents and everything. But um, there are times when they need direction, um, like, um, you know, okay, well, why, for example, um, in terms of markets, right, um, why, uh, how, how should they design the, the armor?
and I'll tell him, well, he's a Templar, but he's, he's one of those, uh, he's not a paladin. And so they'll be asking, so what's the difference between Templar and paladin? And in our world, a Templar is a guy who are like a zealot, you know, and he's hell bent on, you know, uh, exterminating other races whilst, whilst, a, whilst a paladin would use his, uh, you know, powers of the light to actually, you know, help people and uh, try and protect and uh, heal people, you know. So therefore, Templars should have, um, you know, a little, a little bit more, a little bit more brutal and uh, aggressive um, armor in relation to the paladin. Things like that. Um, they need, they need directions, and especially they don't. Um, most of our, actually, all of our artists are Japanese, so they don't understand uh, the two, two different factors between Japanese art and. Uh, and um, Western art, for example, Japanese art is something like, um, you know, it's all about aesthetics. It's all about how it looks good, cute, or cool. Uh, whereas Western art is all about functionality. Um, like, for example, how would a guy draw his sword? Is he left-handed or right-handed? Uh, what happens if he loses his sword? Has he got a knife? Or, you know, um, wh what kind of stance will he be in? That, those kind of stuff. Um, Western design is all about that, making sure the design actually works in real life. Whereas Japanese design, it's all about the looks. Everything is created from the looks and the character, basically. Well, that's a very interesting point about um, the differences between Western and Eastern design. I really didn't think about that before, but uh, that, that is fascinating. Um, what do you think accounts for this? Excuse me, sir? Uh, what do you think accounts for the differences in design? Well, you see... I mean, I mean, as as I said, I, I think if you think just about functionality, it doesn't become cool. You know, it doesn't look awesome. Or for for example, if you think about uh, you know Final Fantasy VII's Cloud um, having the uh, you know Buster, Buster, Buster Sword, Sword it's yeah. huge, it's cool, right? But if you think about it, it is such you can't really swing that yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really it's impractical. I mean, I know, I know, I think I know where they got the concept from, and um, it's called a, it's called a zambato. It's a uh, yes, horse slaying sword. Yeah, basically. And um, but in in history, uh, from what, what I know about history, I might be wrong, but from what I know, it was so unwieldy that they ended up not using it that much, you know. So it's um those kind of stuff, you know. But a square muscle, uh, square soft, I think. Back then, Squaresoft must have thought that, uh, you know, it's, it's a great idea to have a huge sword and it looks great, you know, it's fantastic and you did the job. Whereas, uh, would you see that in Skyrim? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless a huge troll's holding it, right? <laughs> like a tooth. Exactly. So that's the kind of stuff. Um, but I want, I want to be able to, uh, make a video game that treads right in the middle without compromising. So I want it to look cool. At the same time, have the um, you know functionality to it. Exactly. Huh. So um, now the thing that's coming to mind is sort of like a Lord of the Rings approach. You know, yeah. like it's very high and fantastical, but mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's completely possible. Yes. Um, we've taken a lot of the um, you know the core thoughts on this project based on Lord of the Rings, but um, we do think that Lord of the Rings it looked good because it was a live action film. And, uh, if you actually translate those, uh, you know, the armor designs and stuff like that into a video game, uh, I think it would look quite bland. So obviously we're not going to do that. We're not going to have people or everybody in brown cloaks because, uh, I think a silver leaf, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, we're not making another next gen military shoot. Exactly. We're yeah. making a fun fantasy exactly. game, you know? And um, also, we need to think about silhouettes. Um, everybody uh, has to have a identifiable silhouette so that people can easily identify its characters. Um, there's a lot of things you have to think about in the video game before we actually commit to a certain design or, you know, um, uh, the look of the world, so to speak. I see. Yeah, that definitely does make sense because, I mean, you the game in development is a very fluid thing. Mm -hmm. Um, because the story may change over time, and that may change um, the entire flow. Sure, of sure, yeah. Like, um, you might have a certain character plan to do something, and it might be reflected in his aesthetic, mm -hmm. but if that changes, you're going to have to change the whole thing. Exactly, so. yeah. Now, um, this is never a very easy question to mm -hmm. ask, but what's your biggest fear with Project Phoenix? Well, I have to be honest. Um, 
I have a lot of fears. Um, anything can go wrong. And that's my job to make sure that um, we take the right decision, we make the right decisions so that I can actually uh, finish the game firstly. And secondly, make a good game that like, is going to stay with um, everybody's hearts. Um, my, my fears are, uh, for me, not being able to keep everybody together in terms of, you know, people will stay together to finish the job, but in terms of, um, passion, basically, everybody's striving towards the same goal, um, the same imagine, uh, imaginative goal that, uh, you know, I said, I, I try to set. That's my, that's my worst fears. Um, because, you know, I try to set the goal very high. And, um, but it needs to be realistic. And that's something that's, you know, I have to be very careful about. That honestly sounds like the kind of thing that would scare the director. Yes. <laughs> Not being able to keep the team together. Yeah, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's my biggest problem. Yeah. Now, suppose you manage to get over your greatest fear, mm-hmm. though. And let's say that's the best, what would you say is the best thing that could happen with Project Phoenix? Well, we can make another one. <laughs> well, basically, um, I want I want to be able to continue this franchise, and I want to tell what happens to Marcus later, and you know, um, and and take you know plays on a new adventure other in other parts of the world in um, next to Azure Guard and stuff like that. That's that's my dream. I do like the idea of. Um, I mean, I haven't seen very much of a world since not too much is available at the mm-hmm. moment. But from what I have seen, I do really like the style of it and the general idea of the world. Thank you. So, I would, I would definitely like to see more of as regard as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Now, also, I noticed in the press release that it said that in addition to Mac, PC, and Linux, mm-hmm. there are going to be iOS and Android versions of Project mm-hmm. Phoenix. Now, are these versions of the game going to be um, ports of their PC cousins, or are they going to be somewhat different spin-offs? Okay, um, we... To be honest, we don't know yet, and um, it would be great if we can do a port, but it depends how you know ambitious we get. And um, if we can't, if if it, if it doesn't feel like fun playing on these uh, iOS devices or Androids, uh, we're thinking of making some kind of mini game. Now, um, I, we haven't announced this mini game obviously because uh, we don't know what's going to happen yet, but. Um, Mini game may give you achievements that may reflect on, uh, on the actual main game. So, uh, but anyway, I would like to talk to you more about it when we, um, when we know what, for certain what we're going to be doing with the, uh, you know, the handheld devices. All right, that definitely makes sense because I mean, um, there's just a lot that you can do with iOS and Android. Exactly. Right now. I mean, with the way that, um, the way that mobile devices are progressing, by the year 2015, mm-hmm. they're probably going to be a whole lot more powerful. A- absolutely. So what you can do right now is probably going to be much different from what you can do in the yep. future. All right. That sounds very good. Now, um, when does your Kickstarter start? Um, I'll, what I can say is probably early next week. All yeah. right. Well, well, definitely. Also, there's a very mysterious... Um, there's a very mysterious countdown on your website. I suppose you couldn't tell us too much about that. No, you? but um, you could think about it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to start speculating and keep an eye on the site. Great. And Mr. Yura, it has been a pleasure talking ah, with you. Thank um, you very much. So where can fans go to learn more about Project Phoenix? Well, um, you could go to projectphoenix.info um, or to follow us on Twitter uh, with a link on that website or... Uh, um, like us on Facebook. Or plus you on Google+. Plus. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Everybody forgets Google+. Yes, plus. I, do, I do too. Actually, I'm, I'm not taking care of these uh, SNS sites, so um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't really <laughs> comment, I guess. But yeah, that's, I guess, where you can get most of the info. Or you could, you could send me a tweet on um, a Twitter and see if I'm, um, uh, yeah. Online. online. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Mr. Yer, it has really been a pleasure talking. Um, I'm going to keep an eye out for Project Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, I do recommend the folks at home do the same. And, um, oh, one final question. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you say is your favorite game of all time? You do ask me very hard questions because, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, today? Okay, today? you're... Um, yes, today. today. I would say Secret of Mana, uh, Secret of Mana, uh, Second Desert 2, which is Secret of Mana. 
Ah, uh, yes. I, I've heard of that. It's on my to-do list. <laughs> yes. It's, really. It's, it's... I've heard some of the music from it. It is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hiroki makes very good music. Um, I'm good friends with him, but um, he's, he makes... Oh, that was yeah. That was a fa- that was really fantastic. What he's done with um, the music and also the gameplay as well. Um, the gameplay was way ahead of, ahead of its time, and um, it'd be great if I can make something of a modern day response to that someday. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to ha- oh, really. I'm going to let you get to your rest. Now. <laughs> so again, it's been, one last time. It has been wonderful talking with you, Mister. Same. Yara. Thank you so much. Good I night. Think good night. I did.